What's up everybody? Welcome back to another DE Hammer video. It's taken some time, but it's alive. Yes, an Xbox controller is now connected via Bluetooth to my Raspberry Pi 4. And I can move my long mill with it. Yes, it works. It works. Now there are some caveats, but we'll talk about those a little later on in the video. And we're also going to talk about how to get it connected, uh, the Bluetooth connected via uh, whether via cord or via Bluetooth to the Pi. Then we're going to have another software where we can map out the buttons on the controller. And then we're going to go into G Sender that we map the buttons there to correspond with our controller. Whew. It's going to be fun. So, if you're following along, you can look down in the descriptions. I'm going to timestamp uh, down below with each command in the terminal I'm using. So you can copy and paste if you're RDPing, or you can just look at those and type them in while you're doing this. Before we get into the video, if you haven't, remember to subscribe and hit that bell button so you keep up with all the latest DE Hammer videos. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and what's that? Oh, yes, Reddit. I'm there as well. So, let's not delay any further. Let's get into this video. First thing first, we're going to update and upgrade. So, we're going to do sudo apt git uh, update, then sudo apt git upgrade and the upgrade part can take a while so remember before you walk away to do something else make sure you hit that y to make the changes then you can walk away go for a walk grab a cup of coffee i would also recommend so this goes faster that you are hardwired in wi-fi can make this go really slow so but that's up to you and if you're uh, remote desktoping in and you want to be actually able to control your Pi while you're doing this, make sure screen blinking is disabled. Yes, a uh, little tech tip there. Or is it enabled? If you can't control it, go to the preferences tab and select screen blinking and toggle it back and forth. All right, now that that's all updated. Our next step is to install the Xbox uh, controller live, uh, drivers. And I'll have a list of all the commands and what you need to type out down below. But it's sudo apt install Xbox DRV for this one. And if you don't want to do Wi-Fi, or I mean Bluetooth with this, that's fine. Just make sure you have the Xbox uh, USB cable. Uh, you can try other cables. I don't know if they'll work. Uh, everyone has said you need the Xbox cable for it to work. So, highly preferable to have this. All right. So, you can see here, I have typed in uh, LSUSB. That was to make sure my Xbox controller was connected to the Raspberry Pi. You can see there, it is connected with uh, the U via USB. So if that's as far as you want to go, you can skip ahead to the connecting part. But before you skip ahead, we got one more thing we need to do. And that is going to be installing the Q Joypad software. So to do that, we're going to do sudo, sudo, sudo apt get install Q Joypad. And that shouldn't take too long. And once that's done, you can go over to games and make sure it's there and click, click on it. And you'll see a little joy, uh, a controller come up in the right hand uh, corner, but we'll jump into more of that a little bit later on. Now let's jump into how to get the Bluetooth going. First, we're going to open up another terminal connection here. And in this, we're going to do echo options, Bluetooth, disable, underscore, R. ERTM equals Y. And we have to turn off this for the Xbox controller to connect via Bluetooth. There's some more there, but again, this is down in the description of what you need to type in. 
So you can copy and paste that over. So just look down there for what you need to type in because there's more to that command line, as you can see. And this is what we're doing so our controller can pair with the Raspberry Pi. This has to be disabled. And then after this step, we are then going to need to reboot our Pi. So we'll go ahead, get that disabled, and then we will reboot and we'll see you back after the reboot. All right, now that we've rebooted, we are going to set up the Bluetooth. And to do this, we are going to need to type in sudo Bluetooth CTL. Okay, and this is going to bring us into uh, being able to look for uh, Bluetooth uh, devices and all that. First, we're going to want to go agent on and then default agent. And for the, since I already have mine con, uh, connected, mine's going to look a little bit different than y'all's. Once we get the default agent on, we'll do scan on. And this, we'll want to make sure our controller is on. And as you can see, we have controller DC colon A6 blah, 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 blah. Now, you don't need to copy this. I'm just uh, showing you what, what's out there. Now, set your controller to pairing. So it's on and then hit the pairing. And now, you're going to get a different device um, MAC address right there. That is the one you want to copy. You need to use this to connect your controller, not that first one where it's just on. So now we're going to go connect space and then paste that MAC address there. Hit enter. It connects. It should say uh, services resolved. Yes. Now we're going to trust it, so anytime we turn it on, it will always connect to it. We'll put that same MAC address there, and now it is a trusted device. Now to test this out and that your Bluetooth is working, we're going to do a sudo apt git install joystick. And this is just for testing. You don't need it. It's not actually part of controlling anything. It's just testing, making sure your um controller is working and connected correctly to the Pi. Once that's done, we'll do sudo uh, JS test. And there's some more again, everything down below. And we'll run that. And now if I was to, if I was connected, you could move these around and you'll see that the numbers are changing for the different buttons you press and it's all there, you're working. So now we can uh, quit out of that. And now we can go hook this up to the long mill and start testing and getting everything set up so we can move it. All right, first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna come over here, go to games, come down to QJoyPad. Let's open that. And you can see right here, that icon pops up. <clears throat> Now let's turn on our controller, solid, that means it's connected. If you need to check, you can always go to the Bluetooth right here and make sure it's connected. Now we can come here, right click, update joystick devices, just make sure it's working, and then double click. All right. So, first thing we're going to do is add, and let's name this C, let's name this C and C. Hit OK. Now, to map out all of these, we go to Quick Set. I like to move my cursor here just in case that gets undone. And the first thing we'll do, let's say we want to map the up button to the controller on the, uh, the gamepad here, up, and that's axis 8 negative, so we'll hit up. See how it unhighlighted there? Just click there again. Down will be down, left will be left, right will be right. 
and that's going to be for our x and y axis. So we can also program the joysticks. So we want to make sure that's still selected. If we hit up, you can see that's going to be negative axis 2. So we'll hit up, down, B. Nope, make sure. Hit down, and that's going to be positive. So we'll hit down, left, axis 1. So now we're on axis 1 and it's negative. That'll be left, right, axis 1 positive, right. And let's just go ahead and quickly hit done. Now remember, we assigned the uh, axis 1 and 2. And that's going to be this left joystick. The thumb pad, I believe that is three and four. But real quick, let's hit update. That's going to save everything we just did. Let's go ahead and open G Cinder real quick. Connect to our machine. There we go. All right, and now. Let's just make sure our <laughs> XY move travel isn't too big. And there we go. Now also with the joystick. But one of the bad things about the Q joypad is you can't um, you can't program multi-key hits. It's only up, you know, you can only program it to one uh, button on the keyboard. So for that to work, you are gonna have to come into here, the settings, go to shortcuts. Let's find, right here. See, we have our jog X plus, our jog uh, minus, and that's set to left and right. The Y is set to up and down, and the Z is, I have it set to U and D. So we can still keep that open. Let's go back to Joypad here, and let's set the Y button to, um, let's actually, let's set this one here, and that is going to be, the right axis is four and three. So we're gonna do a quick quick set and up. We're going to make U for up and the down, the positive, D, hit done, update. Let's go in there and now let's move our Z axis up and down. So pretty cool but we can still do more. So one of the issues I had when I was first doing this was using these are pretty sensitive. If you put, you know, we have the X and Y on this one joystick and I was finding there was some, you know, it could go both positive and right at the same time because it was hitting both. So to fix that, this is, so the left joystick is one and two. So we'll click there. We're gonna hit gradient. And then let's narrow this field down. Okay. And axis two, we're going to hit gradient. And again, we'll narrow this field down. Hit okay. And then update, come in here. And that's going to prevent, it's going to narrow the field in which this will determine where you're going. Now, one of the other cool things, so right now we have every uh, the XY set to 5 and the Z set to 2. Let's go ahead and change that, but let's go back to here, shortcuts, and let's find... That's feed, 
And so you could map these also to start job, pause job, whatever. Um, that can be up to you what you want to do. Let's find... Okay, so I have increased jog speed at equal and decreased speed at minus. So, we'll come back into the joypad center here, hit quick set, and so let's make our negative x. So we're going to hit x, and that's going to be button 4. That's going to be our minus. Okay, now let's set the positive, and we'll hit that as b, and that'll be equals. Hit done, update, come back to here, and now negative, we can see it's decreasing, and we can get it to where both the X and the Z are, the X, Y, and Z are both at the same movement, and if we increase with B, they're all set to the same height now, or the same uh, movement distance. So let's set it to one, and let's just, let's see, let's set it to 10. And you can see that's gonna drastically change your speed and everything there. Now, I know that's changing your speed here and how fast it moves, so that may become an issue, but right now, if you need to set it separately, you can still come in here and change it manually. But we just decrease it low enough that they're all the same. So that'd be cool if we could get a way where, a way where we could set the speed differently with a different button, but for right now, that's the only way we can map them. And you could even set up your probe, your macros, you know, different things, homing, cycling to buttons on here. But for right now, I'm just move. This is great for, I have it set for moving uh, on the X, Y, and Z, changing those back and uh, forth. I'll probably set up a pause button on here as well. And that's going to about wrap it up. And now we got a fully functional controller that can move our long mill. Xbox controller. You could use a gamepad as all as well. See, so just can actually hold it, can do one. And there we go. All right, well that about wraps it up for the tutorial part. Um, as you can see, it works. There's just the minor inconvenience of having to open up QJoyPad when you first boot up. Now, have I tried writing a script that automatically uh, gets that running? Yes. Did it work? No. If I get it working, will I share that with y'all? Yes, I will. Um, <clears throat> I was able to open up a terminal and get it going, but you can't run anything else while you do a boot with the terminal, open Q, um, Joypad. You can't do anything else. It won't work. So if I find a way to get that where you can just boot, it loads it all up and you don't have to mess with going and turning it on. I will share that with all of y'all. Um, otherwise I'm pretty darn happy. There's a lot more that could be done in mess, make fine tuning and picking which commands you want this to control. But I at least wanted to get this out into everyone's hands so you can at least start playing around with it yourself and seeing what you need, not necessarily what I prefer. So, again, thank you all for watching. Remember to hit that subscribe and bell button to keep up with all the latest DE Hammer videos. And until next time, keep making stuff.